Hello and welcome everyone to this super exciting um, very first episode of Between the Covers. Um, this is a project that, well it's exciting for me because I absolutely love books and I love my tarot and oracle decks um, and this is something that is very close to my heart because it's such a big part of who I am and my life so I am a writer as well so I'm a little bit biased in that regard but I've been toying with this idea for a little while now because I get asked so often by people um, what books I recommend and if um, I could do a um, video on books in general. Um, I, so I kind of wasn't sure how I wanted to do this. Um, the same thing with decks as well and asking about different decks that I use. Um, so I kind of decided I want to make it an entire series because I can't just do one or two random videos here and there to recommend things. I'm always getting new books. I have so many as it is that it's just way too hard for me to um, recommend just a couple. So welcome to the very first episode and how this is going to be structured is I'm going to do this as a monthly video. Um, at the moment it may change, it may not, we'll see how it goes as the channel grows. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is splitting this up into different categories and it's going to be exploring the particular books and decks that I have been working with um, throughout that month. So um, to give you an example of how this is going to be split up, it would be, for example, I would do a like a, a non-fiction self-help or spiritual book. Um, I would do the current fiction book that I'm reading, um, it could be a gardening book, a cooking book, um, and also recommending a deck. So it's just going to depend on the genres. It may change slightly each month depending on what I'm working with, um, but I'm trying to give you a broad spectrum because this is really a representative of myself um, and how I use books in my daily life, in my practice as a green witch and also within my spiritual journey as well because books are such a major, major component of that. And you may be saying, well, why are you including fiction? Um, and the reason for this is because a lot of my own inspiration that I get comes through fiction. Um, even though a book is classified as fiction, there is a lot of components within a fiction book that do have a lot of truth or that can inspire you to research into other things. For example, um, quantum physics was something that I started researching based on particular books that I was reading and an author um, that I absolutely love. Um, who uses a lot of quantum physics ideas in her fiction stories. So it's these kind of concepts that I do feel like they deserve their own recommendation and also because fiction inspires our mind. It brings the inner child out, it takes us to different places, it's a way to explore um, your imagination. So. Um, I really wanted to make sure that there was a particular component for that as well. So um, what I'm going to do in this very first episode is instead of looking at the things that I have been working with throughout this month, because this is the beginning, I'm going to be just recommending a couple of my favourites um, or most used books that I reference and also some of my original or one of my original decks that I got um, and I will mention also my one of the books that I'm currently reading at um, towards the end as well. So without further ado let's get into um, the very first one that I'm going to be talking about and I'm going to start off with my fiction and then kind of work my way through. I will finish off with um, my tarot or oracle deck that I'm referencing. That's how I'm going to kind of structure each video. You can find in the description box below the timestamps um, to skip to everything. So if you want to come back at a later time to actually check things out, you can find the timestamps. 
Um, you can also find in the description box any links to these particular books and decks as well if you want to check them out for yourself. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so it was really hard for me to um, choose something that I absolutely love out of my collection because I have so many books that I continue to go back to time and time again um, in terms of fiction, but I really tried to narrow it down to something that um, I will pick up more often than not and also something that inspires me or has inspired me the most throughout my life. So um, the book that I have is called Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen and this is probably one of my most favorite easy read books. Um, it's I ha personally haven't read the book Practical Magic. I know crazy um, but I've seen the movie and I know a lot of people sort of reference um, the style of Practical Magic to this particular book. Um, it's kind of like realism magic. So it is a fiction story, um, obviously, and it is set in North Carolina, um, and it follows um, a couple of characters, mostly um, two women um, in the story who are sisters, and it kind of just follows their life. It's a very... It's very like normal, like everyday kind of thing, um, but it's got just this tiny little bit of touch of magic that's woven throughout the story. Um, Sarah Addison Allen, I've got quite a few of her books. This is how she writes all of her stories. They've got this magic, magical realism um, interwoven into her story. Her style of writing is very easy to read. It's very simple. Um, some people might not like it for that reason because it's very it's just very, I don't know, easy is really the only way to describe it. It's just such this simplistic way of, write, of writing and reading. There's no complications, there's no craziness to the plots, there's no, um, you know, there's no complicated words or anything like that in there. It's just very easy um, reading. And the reason why I like it is obviously for that reason. Um, it's very simple. You can just pick it up and, you know, you don't have to be in that mindset to really get into some books. Like some books are like that where you really have to um, be in the mindset to read it. Um, for example, like I look at um, Anne Rice as that kind of style. You know, her style of writing is very complicated. Um, especially if you're not used to it. So you really have to be in that mood to read the intricacies. Whereas Garden Spells is just absolutely simplistic. And the, I, the, the way I discovered this author was actually through a, um, a Reader's Digest subscription that I had where you get sent um, this book every month I think it was and it had like a couple of chapters of different books within this main book so it was kind of like this sample book of other books and I was about 16 or 17 um, when I I don't even remember signing up to this subscription but I had it for a while and this was actually one of the sample chapters in the book and I fell in love with it. I think they only put like three or four chapters in the book and I had to find it. I had to have it. So um, it's actually quite hard to find her stories, especially here in Australia. I do feel like they're a lot easier to find in um, America, especially when you look online. They're quite often American. Um, but yeah, this is just absolutely beautiful. It's actually got a sequel to it called First Frost. I don't own the book, but I do have the audio book. Um, you don't be surprised if you see me um, recommending her at least once or twice in the future with some of her other books. Um, but yeah, the reason why I absolutely love this is because it inspired that aspect of magic with gardening. I mean, it's called Garden Spells and the main character um, is someone who works with her family heirloom garden that she has and the um, edibles that she creates. She runs a catering company. The edibles that she creates 
affect people in different ways not in like negative ways but it's just like magic like it's just um, but done in a way that it's almost so believable that it just inspires you even more and it really does um, weave in that witchcraft component in some ways without really labeling it as witchcraft it's not witchcraft um, it's just read the book it's it's so much um, easier to understand once you read it so and I don't want to spoil it um, but yeah this is the reason why it inspired me because I'm a gardener as well and I love cooking so it really inspired me with that magical component but in a modern day world So I thought I would add in um, an extra book just to sort of explain what I'm currently reading because this is the first episode and these books um, that I'm recommending aren't ones that I'm actually referencing at the moment. They are just books that I absolutely love. So I did want to say what I'm currently reading though. So this is what's on my bedside table at the moment and the book is actually a non-fiction book and it's a historical as well and this is something that I picked up um, on clearance that really kind of inspired me. I go through phases so you can always tell the kind of moods that I'm in with the kind of books that I'm reading. Um, it'll give you a bit of an idea of what I'm being inspired by at that particular point in time and I've been going through a lot of historical aspects at the moment. I love history, I love strong leaders as well, um, especially strong female leaders um, throughout history because it's been such a more complicated journey for women. Um, so I've really been going deep into that component. Like I'm someone who will immerse myself not just in a book, but also with um, the movies that I watch it will be the music that I listen to, everything. I'm really one of those people that tries to immerse myself in something. So that's kind of why I'm excited to do this because you'll see and you'll start to pick up these themes that I go through each month. Um, and these things also inspire my particular writing as well. Um, I like to read a lot of historical things to get information and facts um, that inspire me for my own writing when I'm in my writing phase because I go in and out of it. Um, it also helps me with readings as well. Ironically, you wouldn't think that it would, but these things um, help me to explain things in a different way. They help me to explain um, details about things even more. So, but yes, the current book that I'm reading is called Elizabeth and this is based on Queen Elizabeth. Um, this is actually called The Forgotten Years. So this is by a historian called John Guy. He's also the author of Queen of Scots. This is actually a book that's going to be on my list now because I would like to read more about Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, but Elizabeth has probably been one of, I mean this is my namesake as well, having the name Elizabeth. She's probably been one of my most favorite characters in history because of how much she changed um, the face of England um, and how long she ruled for and also because of how she came about as well being the daughter of Anne Boleyn um, you know and King Henry and that complicated story that we have as well and how she changed the way women were portrayed um, in like modern history. So, you know, because I mean, she never married, she never had any children, things like that, and was constantly challenged at every single turn um, and was the centerpiece for so many plots. So she's always been someone who I've really found inspiring in that particular way because, you know, she's the, the definition of I don't need no man. Um, and I find her story amazing and this historian actually um, comes from a slightly different angle so because this is called the forgotten years um, he comes from the angle of talking about after what most historians focus on so this is um, so most historians will focus on how she came into power how she became the queen the turbulent years of her younger life leading up to um, 
the first um, Spanish Armada that was sent to her and they kind of finish it at that um, and they don't really go into more detail I mean I never knew there was actually five Spanish Armadas that were sent to Elizabeth and to against Elizabeth um, so you know it, this goes into her later years and this is also referencing um, this historian spent thousands of hours scouring over letters um, that were written by Elizabeth as well as her advisors and trying to find um, the particular ones that were actually written or dictated by her personally and not on her behalf in order to help find her true voice um, and not the voice of her advisors because she had a lot of complications within that aspect as well. Um, I do have a bit of a personal interest in this because of my own family history. Um, I have mentioned this before in one of my spiritual vlogs talking about um, my family history. I've got a relative who lives over in England. She's a, I think she's a second cousin, um, who is also an author. But she actually has tracked our family history and through our family history line, um, we actually have a family member whose last name was Paulet. I don't know if it's Paulet or Paulette. I can't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, but that family member was actually the family member who was the jailer of um, Mary Queen of Scots and had a very strong connection to Walsingham who was one of Queen Elizabeth's advisors. So our family was quite prominent back then so I have a bit of a, um, a personal history for that because our family has such a rich history as well and is tied into the history books so um, and the, the, actually, the name is actually mentioned in this book. I've, I'm not far through it, I'm only, where am I up to? I'm um, up to chapter 5 so I've just got past the point where my family member was actually mentioned um, just before Mary Queen of Scots was ordered to be executed so um, it's quite an interesting read um, you know, with historical books like this, I sort of pick it up, I might read a couple of chapters here and there and put it down and I might pick up something else in between um, because it is a little bit more serious, but um, definitely recommend this because it is um, a different approach to other aspects that I have read um, either online or seen in documentaries or other books as well. So. Um, this is my current read at the moment. So the next one that I'm going to be talking about is actually a cookbook. Now I'm not going to do a cookbook every single month. Um, it might alternate between cooking and perhaps a gardening book. We're really going to depend on what my focus has been on throughout that month. but. I have a lot of cookbooks as well. I am someone who loves to cook, as I said, and um, I am not someone who necessarily follows a recipe. Um, I get inspiration from recipes. If it's a complicated recipe, I might do it exactly how it says for the first time, and then I add my own things. Um, and I also like to look at recipes from a different perspective and I add my witchcraft components into it by looking at the magical components of the ingredients that go in um, and ultimately I just think recipes in general are, are just magical because you're bringing together separate ingredients and creating something that um, nourish, nourishes you body, mind and spirit so cooking is alchemy to me um, and I can quite often be found just looking through cookbooks and just reading cookbooks especially these days because a lot of people don't just write a cookbook with recipes they actually have stories behind it as well and they talk about you know their experience with where the inspiration came from through a dish that they have created um, or recipes that have been handed down or just experiences in general with food and food is such a central point of society and our world so I do feel like it's something that um, I'm going to mention quite a lot because I you know cookbooks are no exception to the rest of my collection of books I'm always buying new ones even though I have so many as it is um, you know if it's a great 
name of a cookbook or if it's a really appealing cover, things like that. Or even if they're just one or two recipes that I see and then I go, oh, that's really nice. I like that. I'm going to buy the cookbook. So this is um, something that I'm going to talk about as well. And this book that I'm going to mention is probably one of my most go-to books. I love it. It's inspired me to want to create my own version of a cookbook like this because it's not... <laughs> <clears throat> It's not just a, um, it's not just a cookbook. It's like a combination of stories and cooking. And I absolutely love that. You, that I have so many fiction books that actually have, um, I have a whole shelf that is full of books that are my food inspired books. And they're all fiction, but they all center around food as part of the plot. So it's something that inter intertwines with um, the written word for me and reading. So this book is called Fairy Tale Food um, and it's by Lucy Cash. And um, I found this in a, um, a cooking store that used to be called, I think it was called General Trader. It's no longer there, um, but they used to sell all the gadgets and utensils and things like that. And this was just this out of the way cookbook that I happened to see. I've never seen it anywhere else um, at all. And I don't even know if you can actually source it now. So um, I will try and see if I can, as I said, put the link below for you and hopefully I can find it for you, but I haven't seen it at all. So um, I hope it is still um, in existence for you because this is just, it's so beautiful. It's called fairy tale food because the um, every single recipe is based on traditional fairy tales, and the way she has designed this book, I mean, it's simply magical. Like the the, the drawings, the pictures that go in it. I mean, look at this. You, it's got beautiful artwork in it as well. It's got stories to go along with it. They're all themed. So, I mean, this chapter, for example, is based on this fairy tale Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty. And there is dishes that are created and themed based on the fairy tales. So, for example, this is called Awoken with a Kiss. And it says, um, Sleeping Beauty Bites, Bad Fairy Cakes, and Prince Charming's Kisses. And then obviously you've got that beautiful picture that goes with it. And then with each recipe, um, it actually has a mini story that goes with it. So for example, this is the Sleeping Beauty Bites. And the first part is just this tiny little paragraph talking about things, but it's this really quirky way of talking about it. Like um, this says, you know, a little known fact about Sleeping Beauty is that before she fell foul of the cursed spindle, she was actually quite a party animal. Rumor has it that the fateful incident occurred at one of her late night bashes. Um, she went upstairs to touch up her lipstick and having consumed a fair amount of rosé on an empty stomach, she tripped over her bedroom rug and pricked her finger on the spinning wheel she used that morning to repair her party dress. Like, you know, that's that's the kind of stories that go with it. It's such a well-designed cookbook. It's so magical. You can't help but be inspired when you um, read through this. Like, you can just read through just the stories alone. And the added bonus is all of the recipes that are in here are so simple. They're so easy. They're not complicated at all. Um, I have probably cooked at least half of the things that are in here. Um, there's nothing that is out of the ordinary and if there is something that you can't necessarily get it's so easy to substitute um, with something else. For example I think there's a recipe that has um, it's like a venison um, stew but I just use beef instead of venison so you know it's not it's not complicated. You don't have to be a chef to be able to create create these things. Like it's not like you see all of these fancy designed cakes and, and dishes that look so easily presented. This is easy food. It is comfort food as well. So it's designed in a way that um, you know you can enjoy every facet of it. Um, and I use a lot of these recipes as base recipes for my own creations um, and other things. So 
it is definitely my probably one of my most used cookbooks that I reference more than anything um, aside from one of my Nigella books that I have as well um, so yeah this is definitely my go-to absolute favorite cookbook and as I said it's not just a cookbook it has stories that go along with it as well Okay, so moving into our more witchy and spiritual side of things. So the it was a bit hard for me to decide on what is my most used um, spiritual book because I have quite a few now in my collection that I do reference um, quite often. But this one is one that I have had since I reckon I was probably 16 or 17. Um, I've probably used it more than anything else and it actually ties in really well with the fiction book that I mentioned earlier the garden spells book um, because I kind of had these at the same time um, and it really combines things really well um, it's also really great to combine it with the um, fairy tale food cookbook that I mentioned so um, it was just this perfect amalgamation of everything and you can tell like with just how um, old the book looks and sort of how warped the cover is just how much I do use this and the book is called The Encyclopedia of Magical Ingredients and it's by Lexa um, Rosian I'm not sure if that's how you say her last name I ordered this through one of those um, book catalogues um, Kind of like, you know, you remember when you were in school and you used to have those, I think they were the Scholastic or something like that. They were here in Australia anyway, where, you know, you could do the book clubs and you could order books. This is like, it was like an adult version of them. It was one of those junk mail things that came and this was one of the books that I ordered through there. Um, you know, you can see, like, look at the colour of the pages. It's all like um, worn, like the the cover is all bent and everything because I've used it so much and this is a a Wiccan guide to spell casting so the reason why I love this so much and I know there's plenty of things like this out there now but back then there wasn't as much like this um, available and this is actually it's all it is is a reference so it's an alphabetical reference of just items so like it could be like I've just opened this up and this is talking about you've got um, shigaroi, um, I'm not sure if you have, that's how you say it, um, chives, chocolate, chrysanthemum, cilantro, um, you know it, it is in American so for those of you who are um, Australian like cilantro here is um, coriander not cilantro, cilantro, um, I think that's how you say it over there. Um, so it is. it does reference um, American terms of things, so one that I used to get really stuck on for example is um, Melissa, um, which is actually lemon balm, so it, you may not know the terms, there is over 500 entries in this book, that's what it actually says on here, um, so sometimes you might not be able to find it, but it's absolutely um, awesome to reference, like it references mostly um, you know, so I'll just, it says it on the front cover, I'll just read the front cover. Herbs, spices, flowers, vegetables, fruits, metals and more. So for example, it might also have the moon referenced in here, for example, um, or crystals and things like that. But what I love about this is, um, so for example, I've just opened it up, it's on C and the first one is cabbage. It actually tells you what the ruler is. So the ruler for this is, for example, is the moon. It tells you what type it is and this is a vegetable and it's magical form, which is the whole head. Um, and then it explains um, what this actually can work with and different aspects of magic that you can use with it. Um, so I, it's really amazing as a quick reference and I use this quite a lot and it also has in the back um, different tables that you can use um, that you know you've got like magical employment table, magical creativity and it lists the things that are in this book that you can actually use for these references as well so you can do a quick reference if you're working on something for you know for example getting a job um, you can reference this 
and it, you can look at the list and it's got beetroot and bok choy, buckwheat, cabbage, things like that. So you can actually look these up and see how you can utilize them in your practice. So this is probably one of my most referenced um, books and companion guides that I have had throughout most of my life um, when working with like even now I still will pick it out um, pick it up and reference things um, especially the tables when I just want you know if you want to substitute something for example let's say you don't have access to cinnamon and you want to use something as a substitute for cinnamon um, you know you look it up and you go if you were using cinnamon in a success spell for example you would then go okay what else can I do for success and you can find something else it's the best way to be able to find something that you are most likely going to have on hand um, to substitute things with so I know people can Google things these days, but, you know, honestly, it's just really nice to have a reference for something. And um, this has saved me so many times and helped me so many times with creating my own recipes as well um, to add that magical component. So definitely a go to. I cannot highly recommend it any more than what it is. Um, what I have already, um, definitely worth getting. Okay, so last but not least is the deck. Now, this was such a hard one to do because I have hun I have over a hundred decks here, and there's I've had about um, twenty of those since I was quite young. Um, through that same online sort of book order thing that I, I mentioned before I ordered quite a few decks through that as well so I've had some that have been with me for most of my life the the very first deck I was thinking of using the very first deck as a reference but it's the traditional um, Rider White deck I think that's how you say it I never know how to say that um, and even though I do own the the deck and I have used it here and there I really don't actually use it that much I've never been a big fan of the traditional tarot I like themed tarot um, and I didn't have that one as the only deck for very long I actually ended up getting um, different decks so um, it was quite hard for me to to pick something um, out of the decks but I ended up going with a tarot deck because you know, tarot is what got me into reading things, um, and most of my decks that I did own were actually oracle decks as well, not tarot. Um, so the one that I have, I actually didn't think you could find it anymore, but I have seen it um, in a lot of stores now and online. It's been reprinted, um, so it's not in the box that I own now. I actually own one of the original... Um, boxes that it came out in so I have no idea what it looks like now I just know that it's in a hardcover box like you would traditionally see a lot of your oracle decks now um, and but I don't know what it looks like on the inside so what I'm going to show you is not necessarily what you're going to get if you purchase it now uh, because I do own one of the originals and I mean I don't even know this is published in 2007 it says copyright 2007 so it's probably, it would be that old <laughs> because I was 17 when I got this. So it's called the Mystic Fairy Tarot. I still don't see it very often online. Um, I do, and people quite often comment on it when I do use these cards. Um, but you can see it's, it's in a box. And I don't actually like when tarot come in boxes because the boxes are so bulky. They take up so much room. They're more fiddly as well. Like the box is quite worn um, and I really have to be careful with it. So when you um, open it up, it has the guidebook that comes with it, which is very thick. Um, it's been one of the best guidebooks that I've referenced and this actually came with the tarot cards actually came in a um, little bag as well and then inside the bag and, and as I said I don't know if the um, deck that you can get now has this as well um, 
it may do it may not do but inside the bag it also came with these two extra cards that um, are a it's a fairy greeting and then there is a fairy farewell and um, they seem kind of gimmicky but at the same time I actually used to use these quite a lot when I was working with this deck especially when I was getting to know the deck um, and it's just this little poem that you can read as like a greeting before you start using it and a little poem that you can read as a bit of a farewell as well for thanking the cards. Now, um, I will leave a link in the description box below as well for um, my opinions on working with Taro and connecting with Taro. Um, but the reason why I specifically wanted to add in a deck of the month is because I personally will select one of my decks, whichever one that I'm intuitively drawn to using at that time, and I will work with it, usually for about a month, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, where I will draw a card daily for myself um, and actually read the guidebook as well. I know that a lot of people feel like you don't, to be experienced, you shouldn't be reading the guidebooks, and this is, I feel like that's not the case. Um, the reason why I read the guidebook is because I feel like it's a way to get to know the personal, the actual deck personally, because each deck has its own story. It's created by someone in particular who is telling a particular story, and I do feel like um, it's a really great way to understand the interpretations of the cards within this deck, and also it's it's my way of. It's how I've developed my practice as an intuitive um, when reading the tarot and oracles myself. It's how I get to know um, different interpretations of the messages and broaden my understanding of things because, you know, you might get the Three of Swords, for example, in each tarot deck is going to have a slightly different, even though the, the core meaning is going to be the same, there's going to be a slightly different interpretation and different energy and feel to the cards depending on the deck that you're using. Now I also forgot to mention too that this is created by um, the artwork is Linda Ravenscroft um, and the text is actually by Barbara Moore. Now I was quite surprised because I've owned this for so long um, and I actually own quite a few Barbara Moore tarot decks now um, and she's probably one of my absolute favorites when it comes to um, interpretations of the meanings and cards and the stories behind the cards because she goes into a lot more depth. She doesn't have a lot of that doom and gloom kind of energy that you get a lot of tarot readers that do, especially with the really negative cards. She has um, a really well-rounded um, connection to them. And this particular deck, she's done a great job of um, interpreting the stories of the cards. So that's another reason why I like to work with a deck for a month um, or two, especially when it's a brand new deck, because each deck has its own story, as I mentioned. So um, this, this particular um, tarot deck, I'll show you some of the cards so you can have a bit of an idea of how they look because they, it is very simple but beautiful artwork um, and I do love the messages that come through from it as well so that's the back of the deck that you can see there and this is the the deck itself so this is how the artwork looks it's um, of course they're all going to be one so there's the eight of wands there um, the ace of pentacles so it's, it's actually the entire fairy realm. Um, and it's kind of got this touch of like whimsy, but also um, from an adult interpretation as well. So there's, it's this mixture of um, childhood fairy tales in some ways and also adult um, representations of things. So, I mean... If that there you can see that is the Ten of Swords and it's very there's very interesting stories and when I do read with these cards I actually reference the stories um, quite a lot too because they have beautiful messages and what I mean by the stories is so um, for those of you who work with the tarot you've got the major arcana obviously there's um, 
the 22 cards that are the major arcana and then in the minor arcana you have the suit so you have pentacles wands cups and um, swords now this theme might change depending on the particular tarot deck that you're working with obviously um, I'm going to try to not go too deep into understanding the tarot um, and in this particular um, deck we have the major arcana and there's mostly staying to the traditional names of things there is slightly different aspects to it and um, then you do have the normal suits as well of being swords, cups, pentacles and um, wands but the interpretations are quite interesting so for example you would see um, like the suit of wands each card keeps the same characters and the same story throughout the, um, the suit so going from the ace through to the ten it's the same characters and the same story through each component um, before you get to the court cards, which are individual fey within the court cards. Um, so this actually will have quite a big story. So for example, here you can see in the guidebook, we've got the Ace of Wands here, and there's quite a big text. This is why this book is so thick, because the, um, the stories for each card are actually quite much, um, a lot more detailed then the divination um, or intuitive message and the reason for that is because a lot of the hidden meanings are within the actual story so for example this will say this is the ace of wands and it says once upon a time on a warm summer evening a fairy clan gathered to hear stories told by their elders the stories were about faraway places and strange sights after the elders went off to sleep, some of the younger Fae decided they wanted to travel and seek new things so they had their own stories to tell. And it continues on with this story. Um, it's a really um, beautiful way of understanding the cards and seeing the deeper meanings from the cards. This is why I love Barbara Moore with her interpretations with decks as well because she always goes into the story behind it. And Taro is a represented um, representative of life and life is stories so this is probably one of my um, favorite decks it's the aside from the traditional tarot which was just the tarot and very simple guidebook that I had um, this is the most detailed um, one of the first detailed tarots that I ever um, purchased is kind of set the tone for what I expect in tarot decks um, now, I don't buy, I'm not a big fan of tarot decks that just don't have, um, that have very basic meanings um, or symbols unless they are an indie deck that has been specifically created by people. A little bit different. But I do have some decks that are just very simple and they've just got keywords, um, but they're more themed in other aspects. But anything that has a nice, strong, long guidebook that goes with it is always something that I'm going to recommend. And this is a very simple um, deck to work with. It's got a very light energy, um, very easy to understand the messages, very easy to understand the cards as well. As it sticks to the traditional aspect, there's no complications with understanding what suit is this, what meaning is this, and that kind of thing, because sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, but yes, this is my was my first um, tarot deck that I purchased um, at 17. So definitely one of my go-to ones and one of my top decks that I still work with to this very day. So thank you everyone, I now that we have come to the end of this, this is probably a slightly longer video than I would have liked, however as you probably know by now once I start talking I can talk a lot. Um, I have referenced probably an extra book here than I would ordinarily have referenced so um, in future it may not be quite as long, it may be a little bit longer, I just am never going to know when it comes to the timing of this um, with these videos and obviously I have explained um, the purpose of this as well so um, in future episodes it'll be getting straight to the point as opposed to explaining the whys. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you look forward to more episodes so 
Um, my schedule for uploading these, I'm planning on um, moving forward, doing them around the new moon um, each month because that's something new, it's inspiring as well, giving you new ideas. So I will be hoping to upload them around the time of the new moon, depending on whether or not that's going to conflict with other videos though. If there is other videos in my schedules that it may conflict with, I may adjust the day here or there. So. Um, this is the rough idea and if there is anything in particular that you would like me to talk about um, or reference because you know there's a big chance that I may have it in my collection if you would like more details about particular things um, perhaps I can do a bit of a spin-off on talking about other aspects as well um, please let me know in the comments down below I'm happy to answer any of those questions and as I said if you're interested in any of these things in the description box I will try and find the links for everything if I can't find a link for anything I will just name the book and then you can do your own research to see if you can actually find it um, because it does depend on the country that you're in as well in terms of availability and you may also be able to find it as an audio um, book as well so thank you so much for watching everyone. I'm sending you all lots of love. Bye.